Hey, Hi. and welcome to the new year of Connect Groups. A happy new year. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Um, if this is your first time in a connect group, well done for joining. My name's Dan. And, and I'm Kate. Is, and we're two of the pastors at HTBB. And well done for joining connect group. These are a great place to make great friends uh, and also deepen your faith together. Uh, thank you so much for the feedback we got when we asked uh, at the end of last year. We've taken it on board. One of the things you'll notice today is that the questions, uh, we've gone uh, a little bit uh, deeper. Uh, and there's two sorts of types of question. There's more sort of application questions, mm -hmm. uh, but then there's also questions questions that focus back more on the passage. Like a Bible study kind of vibe. Yeah, you won't have time to do all of them, but hopefully this will help generate discussion uh, that you'll find useful. You can choose which ones you want to do. Now, this week, we're going to do the... Kate's going to give us the reading in a moment. Be really helpful to have it open in front of you. 1 Kings 19 verses 9 to 16. But first, I'm going to give the background uh, that Miles shared with us. This is the passage that Miles preached on on Sunday and tells the story of Elijah uh, in a little bit of a low point mm. of his life. Now, previously, things have been going really well. Uh, well, not for the nation of Israel. Things have been going really <laughs> badly. But Elijah had led them into this moment of victory and the prophets of Baal had been shown up for being false prophets. God had been vindicated. And then, uh, yeah, it goes a bit bad. Now, King Ahab tells his wife Jezebel that everything Elijah had done, that he killed all these uh, prophets with the sword. And Jezebel, she just kicks off and she sends this message to him. You read it. May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. And like Elijah goes into a bit of a tailspin. I don't know if you've been in that situation where you wake up and like you look at your phone first thing and you've got a message and like, it's like, oh, just, you know. <laughs> You're I, annoyed even before you've had your breakfast. <laughs> There's a song by the Averitt brothers that opens with the lyric, turning on my phone was the first mistake I made. <laughs> and uh, the song's called, I should have spent the day with my family. <laughs> and, um, but it sends him into this tailspin. It's, it's so true, isn't it? Often you have these amazing highs and then they're followed by these big lows. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just part of life, really, it, it, the ups and the downs. And, and often that's when we're most vulnerable. And so he runs away and he, he comes to a broom tree, Aww. which is definitely the saddest that's of all so trees. Sad. It's um, a tree named after its It's demise. actually not really even a tree. <laughs> that photo's not good. It's actually, I found this photo oh, of a guy. Bush. <laughs> it's a bush. It's a broom bush. So they're not actually made into brooms. No, 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 no. Oh. not used for broom. Oh. Well, I don't know. Oh, maybe, <laughs> nah. the, maybe the... Yeah. The things are. But anyway, it's a sad tree. And he says, and he prays that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he says. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Now that reminded me of that old hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. Consecrated, Lord, to thee. I don't know what you should sing. But it, no, I'm not going to. He just stops with, Take my life. Um, <laughs> like, I'm done. I'm exhausted. And he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. Now, that exhausted. Point, an angel appears to him and says, get up and eat and provides food for him. I find this so super encouraging that God knows that we're tangible, real people and just knows what we need. Sometimes we need some food. You have physical needs. I'm and tired, we, need we, a nap. We're going to see God meets four key needs in this passage. Physical needs, spiritual needs, emotional needs, and also... Oh, down here, existential needs, basically a longer word for purpose. We need purpose. We need direction. And God even gives that to him uh, later on. But uh, but up here at the beginning, he tells him to eat, sleep and get some exercising as well. Uh, he gets him uh, traveling and he travels for 40 days, which is a long, long time to this place in Horeb. Now, this is a special place. Horeb is the place where Moses met Yahweh at the burning bush. It is the place where God had given them the law. Like this is a place of calling, uh, set my people free. It's the place of commandments. These are the Ten Commandments. This is how to live. Um, and this cave, actually the word is the cave. It's likely the cave that Moses is in when the Lord passes before him in Exodus 33. And um, and I think he, he's heading back to there because this is a place of spiritual significance for them and the first point that miles gave to us was cling to hope in the times where it's bad don't maybe look to the future of the things you might hope to end up in uh, to one day uh, look back to the times when god was faithful in the past those past places of encounter because out of that you you can see what god might want to do in this moment and that's going to lead us to our first big question where is your Sinai? Just to break that down for you, Elijah returns to a place of spiritual significance. So share a moment of encounter that has been of importance for you. And what does that experience mean for you today? 
and then uh, breaking it down even further, what do you think Elijah wanted mm. or expected returning to Mount, Mount Sinai? Brilliant. So discuss that. Where's your Sinai? And then see you back in a while. Okay, great. So I hope that was helpful. And Kate is now going to read to us. So like Dan said, have it out in front of you. Really helpful to have a pencil so you can put a question mark next to any questions you have, an exclamation mark next to anything that stands out to you, and an arrow for anything you can apply to your life. So this is 1 Kings 19 verses 9 to 16. Let's read. There he came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint him. Oh, how do I say it? Hazel? Hazel? <laughs> was like Hazel to me? Hazel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nishmi, Nimshi, dyslexia, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Meholah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. Brilliant. So, Miles pointed out to us that the first thing to do in this kind of season is to cling to hope, to look back to the places of past encounter. But the second thing to do is to converse with God, to hear from and respond honestly to God. Uh, so we see that we, we've already seen that his physical needs were met. Uh, we see spiritual needs are met. How? through hearing the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord came to him and his emotional needs are met because God asks him, what are you doing? <laughs> and then he gives space to speak. You know, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Like God speaking to him and yet God says just one line and he just goes on and on. Blah, like, blah, blah, blah. So I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left. Mm -hmm. Not true, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> and they're trying to kill me too. Um, and what I love about this is it's honest, real and wrong. <laughs> um, so basically, he's not the only one left. There are 7,000 others, which we read in verse 18. But we can feel like that sometimes, can't we? That we are the only one who knows how we're feeling. We're the only one standing up for the right way. Um, but we, we need to know that e even if that was true in the physical, Jesus is with us and he knows what it's like. So we're never the only one. God has not left him with itself without a witness. But also he's just said, well, you should kill me, God. I, I, I'm done with my life. And then basically give five very good reasons why it'd be important for him to go on living and for the Lord <laughs> not to take his life. There's this massive disconnect. So I'm zealous for God. Great, carry on living. The Israelites <laughs> are rejected. Well, they need a leader. Your prophets are put to death. Well, they're going to need you. I'm the only one left. Well, it's not true. But if that's the case even more so even more so and the the bad guys want to kill me well let's not oblige them so <laughs> th there's this big disconnect he's honest real and wrong and i, and I think it's two and god's things... okay with that <laughs> yeah well, i think there's two things to take away just because you feel something does not mean that it's right but also just because you're feeling something that's not rooted in reality does not mean that it's not valid that you have those feelings like the lord doesn't correct him 
He doesn't take him to task on all of these. Uh, instead, the Lord says to go and do something. Uh, and, and then, as Kate read, that the, the wind uh, passes before him, an earthquake happens, uh, <laughs> the fire comes, there's earth, wind and fire. Do you remember? Uh, and uh, but after that, the fire. I knew we'd get you singing. Came a gentle whisper, or in sort of the original language, a, a still small voice, the silent sound, or a thin silence. Beautiful poetry mm. in that. Actually, um, that emoji is slightly freaky. A little it was, bit. Yeah, it's like oh, someone's behind me. It's like mm. a, yeah, scary. Um, but he whispers because he's so close. God is God is so close to us in a nice way, unlike that emoji, and. Um, <laughs> And I, I think there's so much to explore there that we haven't got time. But Miles's challenge to us was that you can't say that God is silent if our Bibles are closed. Mm. And uh, we can read his word and expect God to speak to us specifically about what we're going through. I think we said this before um, the end of last term, but um, I started this new little habit of just having my Bible open somewhere in the room um, on my bed stand. Um, so that, you know, if I get an extra minute, I could have a little read, see if the Lord's mm. going to say anything with my two minute spare good habit. And you were just it's amazed really at helpful. how often it was specific for what you needed to hear that day. Very often the, the, uh, we'd wake up to the girls crying and it'd be like, oh, I don't want to start my day without anything. So I'd literally read one line before before I ran into the room and God would speak to me in that one line and it was like, yeah. Um, so yeah, set the bar low, but quite helpful to have your Bible open. So he encounters God and then God asks the same question and Elijah responds in the same way. Like, <laughs> the exact same, same, same no difference. Exactly the same lines. And I love this from brother. It's like our arguments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically just. It's like, no, 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 I've heard what you've said, but no, you haven't heard what I said. You say it all again. <laughs> And vice versa. And I do. <laughs> um, I love this from Brother Luigi. There is nothing that passes through your heart that's unworthy of bringing before your father in prayer. Uh, that we can just be honest about who we are. And as Mar said, it's good to be honest with God, to tell him exactly how you're feeling, even if it isn't accurate. Uh, this is the first step towards being restored and put back together again. Um, and what's so important in that place of despair is to encounter God, to, to hear from him, and speak to him mm. and so that leads us uh, to to our second question what does intimacy with God look like for you in this season and our sub questions to that would be and you can pick a mix choose which ones you want to answer um, share what you do to cultivate intimacy with God and that might be different in this season oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah um uh, next Share what you find hardest. Um, my mum would love that one. She <laughs> likes to connect over the, over the hard things. Um, next sub question is, how do you practically read the Bible so that you can hear the gentle whisper of God's voice? So you do it by having it open and trying to grab moments where nobody else is around. Mm -hmm. um, I do it by, I do it on this app on, on OneNote and I find having a pencil, even if it's a digital pencil in my hand, but to mark down really helps me connect uh, with, with what it's saying mm. and then these ones are these are two questions rooted in the scripture a bit more what do you think it means that god was not in the earthquake wind or fire and why do you think that god speaks in a whisper so what does intimacy with god look like for you in this season Brilliant. We hope that was really illuminating. Yeah. And OK, so the last point from Miles was be bold, be bold and obey and obey. So the Lord said to him, go back the way you came. I just got another song. Be oh. bold, be strong for the Lord. Oh, God 90s, is with you. 90s hit. Uh, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. <laughs> and uh, this is really interesting because he's been trying and trying and trying to get Ahab and Jezebel in Israel to change. Some very good names if you're like looking for baby names just saying. Ahab and Jezebel. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the, the, and Jezebel would be a lovely Haziel. name. Haziel. Yeah. Um, but basically, he's been trying to get them to change. And now the Lord says, no, we're going to try something different. And so he says, basically, you're going to pick two new kings and you're going to pick a new uh, prophet to succeed you. Um, and it's really interesting because um, at some point in God's good plan for us is for us to step down, having raised up successors. Like that, that's part of God's good plan for us, that one day we would let, get to let go of some of our responsibilities and hand them over to others. Really freeing, but also very humbling, I think. 
Yeah, and what's amazing here is obedience is not just about helping you get out of your situation, but also about helping others out of theirs too. The impact is bigger than just you. In the same way, like when we sin, it, it impacts more than just us. When we're obedient, it impacts and flows even wider uh, and has bigger impact than us. Uh, and some just interesting things here, like one thing here is I think Aram is in, well, Aram is in Syria and Ahab had attacked uh uh, Syria earlier on in his reign and taken over it. So one of the things that God here is doing is reversing that. He's saying, no, mm. go and put a king over that. Let's undo that victory that uh, I wasn't in. And then it says, get a new king for Israel and anoint him and then get someone to succeed you. Now, what's interesting is the question is, will Elijah obey? obey? And the answer is nearly. nearly. He does one out of three. He, <laughs> he anoints Elijah in the next bit, but he doesn't do these next two bits. And it's actually nearly 13 years until Elisha ends up doing that on his behalf. Um, and, and partly, I, I imagine he didn't do it because it's scary. Like, you know, these are acts of insurrection to make it very politically, mm. politically relevant for the moment. You cannot have two kings. Where, mm. where there are two claims to the throne, uh, things go badly wrong. This is a, a political act reflected back later on when Herod hears that there is a new king in town. And, we know that ended uh, badly. And ends badly in the Christmas story. Uh, and so Miles gave us an equation. He said, God's word plus our will equals his outcome. See, he involves us which maybe that's why he whispers, because he doesn't want to force us. He doesn't just make stuff happen. He wants to involve us. But it's also why he teaches us to pray, your kingdom come on earth, like this bit of earth. It, my, I'm made of dust. Start here, Lord. Uh, your kingdom come on this bit of earth as it is in heaven. Start in my heart. And out of that, he involves us in his uh, process to see his outcomes, which leads us to our third and final question before we pray for each other. What do you need? Not from the shops, but maybe. Um, where in your work do you need a special wisdom from God to know the best way forward? Um, and what has God been saying to you recently? And how do you feel about obeying him 100%? Um, within are these the next? Which one yeah, these there? we've sort of split the two. We're trying something new. Let us know. Uh, <laughs> some of them are more just practical. How do we outlive? live this out you know we're told don't just be here is the word do it mm. do what it says uh, so that's those first side of the column the, the second half we're looking back more sort at the passage bible study questions yeah um so in this passage we see a leader in crisis how do we respond when our own faith is under pressure how do we respond when those who lead us are going through a crisis and wh what opportunities do moments such as these provide so share that with one another and then pray for one another. And to close, Kate's going to pray for us now. Lord, thank you so much that you want to speak to us and that you involve us. And I thank you that you speak in a whisper because it gives us an opportunity to obey just by choosing to listen. And hmm. Jesus, I ask that now you would speak to every single person through the end of this connect group session through the prayers that are prayed through the exploration of the questions and um as they listen to you maybe within their prayers i pray holy spirit that you would move and that um jesus that you would make yourself known and bring real clarity and life and joy um to every single person as as they choose to listen to you come holy spirit Amen. 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 Have a great week and see you on Sunday. Bye. God bless.